So Manchester United defeated Leicester City one goal to nil courtesy of a penalty by Marcus Rashford. I'm happy for them that they sort out their penalty woes. Man United go up to fourth on eight points while Leicester City stay fifth also on eight points. But don't get too excited Man United fans. I hope you enjoy the game this Thursday in the Europa League against Astana before you face West Ham this weekend. Sheffield United lost at home to Southampton in a game that ended one goal to nil courtesy of a 66 minute goal by Moussa Genepo, who has been very, very brilliant for Southampton so far this season. Billy Sharp, their legend, did get sent off in the 85th minute, and the Blades are now 14th on 5 points, while for Southampton, they're currently 10th on 7 points. Southampton hosts Bournemouth in their next game, while for Sheffield, they play Everton on the road. Brighton and Bournemouth play to a 1 1 draw, courtesy of goals by Mopai and a late goal by Jeff Hendrick to give Burnley a very valuable one point. Burnley are currently 13th on 5 points while for Brighton they are 15th also on 5 points. Brighton's next match will be away against Newcastle while for Burnley they will host the Canaries. Tottenham Hotspur defeated Crystal Palace 4 goals to nil courtesy of a brace by Hun Ming Son, an own goal by Patrick Van Arnhol and another goal by Eric Lamella. Tottenham go up to 3rd on 8 points while for Crystal Palace they are at 11th on 7 points. Tottenham will play against Olympiacos next in the Champions League and then they meet Leicester next weekend in the Premier League. While for Crystal Palace, they would host Wolverhampton Wanderers. And before I move on, man, what the hell has happened to Christian Benteke? This man seems like he is so low on confidence, he can't even get power into his shots. It's, it's so sad, man, what has happened to Benteke. I wish he was still at Liverpool, though. Norwich City defeated Manchester City three goals to two, courtesy of goals by Todd Cantwell, another by McLean, and Timo Puki, of course, was on the score sheet. Man City's goal scorers were Sergio Aguero and Rodri. I'm a Man City fan, if you guys don't know, and uh, it's an embarrassing loss. I made a whole video talking about it, so go check that video out, man. I, I don't want to go too deep into this at all. But Man City, we are currently second, still second. How many points do we have, man? I don't even know. Let me check. We have 10 points, 5 points behind Liverpool. This is simply... Ridiculous, but it's still early. It's still early. Norwich are currently 12th on 6 points. They have picked up 2 wins. So, they have been pretty, pretty decent. They need to win more games though. Need to stop losing. But what's most important for Norwich fans and the team they didn't lose today? And a big one, guys. A big one. Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. Chelsea 5. Wicked. A hat-trick. Matter of fact, not a hat-trick. Tammy Abraham actually scored four goals on the day, including an own goal. So, ugh. but awesome performance by the Chelsea Youth Academy graduate, man. Awesome, awesome stuff. Matter of fact, matter of fact, wait. All, all goal scorers were Chelsea Youth Academy graduates. Tomori, Abraham, and Mason Mount with the fifth goal. Pretty, pretty awesome stuff, man. I know in the beginning, I criticized Frank Lampard for playing all these youth players when he had experience like Olivier Giroud and William and other guys on the bench. And it seems like his philosophy is paying off. It's paying dividends right now. Congratulations to Tamri Abraham, man. I think he scored like five goals in the last two games. Awesome. Matter of fact, six goals. You got to include the own goal. <sighs> Patrick Cuccioni opened his scoring for Wolves as well. But this is a big confidence booster for the Blues, man. Especially for Frank Lampard, who didn't start the season out too well. Two wins now, it's it, it will do a lot for his confidence, man. Awesome stuff, convincing victory against a very good team in Wolves, who are currently 18th. Matter of fact, wait, wait, 19th in the Premier League on three points. It seems like their run in the Europa League qualifiers and now they have gone into the group stage. It may just affect their league campaign. Hopefully they don't panic and sack Nuno Espirito Santo because he's a very, very good manager. And oh, I just saw a notification popped up on my phone that the Leicester fans were booing Harry Maguire. But he did pick up the victory against his old team, so... 
Ah, so he, he won't really care. It's just business as usual. Wolves will face Braga this Thursday in the Europa League and then they play Crystal Palace in the Premier League. While for Chelsea, they take on Valencia, who will have a new manager, so they would look to take that scalp. And then the big one next weekend, Chelsea against Liverpool. That's a game to watch. That's definitely a game to watch. Which segues nicely into the Liverpool-Newcastle fixture, man. Liverpool. What more? What more could I say about this team, man? This is the featured match of this video, by the way. You saw how I just ran through the other fixtures. Well, it was to get to this fixture. Leave the best for last. It, you know, it, they, they, they were simply amazing, man. They were simply amazing. And another day when I thought they would have dropped points, they just came back to win the game. I was watching this game earlier and Yacho Willems, the Dutch left back, he scored a brilliant goal really early in the game. And I was like, yeah, boy, woo. Oh, man, I felt good. I felt really good because I thought they were going to drop points. Their match was before the City game. So I'm like, if they drop points, we go on to win our game. We'll definitely, you know, catch up to them. But mm, <sighs> it didn't work out for me. They won the game after conceding. Marne scored another spectacular goal. I think he was set up by Robertson and he put it in the V again. I think this is his third goal like this this season. Him and Salah, they settled their little differences that they had in the last game against Burnley. And, you know, Liverpool were rampant on the day again. It's like Newcastle had just shaken up a wasp nest because Liverpool, man, they just woke up and spanked Newcastle. Sadio Mane with that opening goal. And then Divock Origi, who started in place of Firmino, had to go off injured while Jurgen Klopp was doing a little bit of rotation because they have a big Champions League against Napoli. And then Firmino came on to show them how important he is to this Liverpool team. It was a brilliant through ball. He overcooked the through ball. And I think Martin Dubravka should have done way, way better with that. Marnie got on the end of it. He hit it onto Dubravka and it somehow fell nicely to him for a tapping. Sadio Marnie on the score sheet once again. And you know if Sadio Marnie is on the score sheet, Mohamed Salah would want to be on the score sheet as well. He did get his goal in the second half. It was a brilliant one to between him and Roberto Firmino. Man, it was a sweet backflip. And Salah just basically ran through the Newcastle defense and put it nicely in the back of the net for a nice, nice cheeky finish. 3-1 Liverpool. Klopp elated. Liverpool on top of the table, 15 points. Five wins in five. 14 wins on the trot. Yeah, 14 league wins on the trot. 44 games, I think, unbeaten at Anfield. Oh my God. Who's going to take points from this Liverpool team? Who's going to take points? November 9th, could we do this, man? The way we've been playing, guys, uh, I'm, I'm beginning to doubt this team. You know, I shouldn't doubt my team, but guys, man, if Norwich picked us off like that, with Otomendi and John Stones at the back, imagine what would happen against Liverpool. Didn't wait, wait, wait. I think Otomendi and John Stones did play in the Community Shield, didn't they? When it was a 1-1. Hmm. So you never know, guys. You never know. Maybe Liverpool, who knows? Maybe one of their key players could pick up an injury. But I don't think so, man. Virgil van Dijk has been playing every single game. Sadio Mane is very fit. Salah is fit. Firmino is fit. Wijnaldum is fit. Fabinho is fit. Robertson. Trent Alexander-Arnold is fit. Henderson, all these guys are fit. Shakiri, uh, Matip, Allison ain't fit, but it's still no problem because Adrian has, you know, slotted in nicely. Had a very, very quiet game. But Newcastle, they tried, they tried, they tried their best. Dubravka kept them mm, in the game somewhat before the third goal was scored. But I knew Liverpool would have always came out victors in that game. Newcastle, you tried. Steve Bruce, you tried. But... Newcastle would have always came out second best against this Liverpool team. Guys, is this Liverpool's year to win the Premier League? Is this their year to win the Premier League, man? Answer that question in the comment section down below because the way how we are dropping points, we have already dropped five points this season and Liverpool are five points ahead of us. Could they stretch the gap even further or will they slip behind again 
like they did last season. Guys, I'm your boy Dominic Rich. Just wanted to share my thoughts on all seven Premier League fixtures that were played on Saturday, September the 14th. So I appreciate you watching this video. If you're new around here, consider hitting the subscribe button. Smash the thumbs up button. And if I miss any major talking point, just leave it in the comment section down below. We will talk about it in a live stream that I have planned, I think, Monday. I... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises. But from your boy Dominic Rich, guys, until next time, peace out. Rich Squad. And do enjoy the Champions League and the Europa League this week. Okay?